What's up, everybody? It's Professor Rako. Uh, we're concluding our earnings per share videos uh, today with this video here. So what we're doing in this video is we're taking, uh, looking at an example where we have multiple potentially deleted securities and how we handle that. Okay. So the way I tell my students is uh, when we're when you're dealing with something like this, when you have multiple potentially deleted securities, handle each one like its own individual problem. Okay. Stock options don't affect convertible bonds, which don't affect convertible preferred stock, right? So they're each their own little individual problem. And at the end, we'll talk about how to put them all together into earnings per share, okay? So that being said, let's look, get going here. We've got net income for 300,000, 100,000 shares outstanding during the year. Uh, the income tax rate's 40. And here's our, uh, our potentially diluted securities. We've got stock options that allow the employees to purchase 30,000 shares of common stock. All right, so here the exercise price is 10, market price average is 18, therefore we know that they are diluted. All right, we've got convertible preferred, so remember convertible means we have to look at it in diluted. Cumulative tells us that regardless of whether the dividend was declared or not, we're going to subtract it. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about there, make sure you go back and watch the uh, earlier video when we did convertible preferred stock in the diluted section of these videos. Uh, and make sure you, you see what's going on there. But cumulative just means we subtract the dividend from basic. And then convertible cumulative just means that we're going to add it back in dilute. Okay. Uh, we've got some convertible bonds that we're going to have to deal with as well. All right. So remember, it's we're going to do basic and diluted earnings per share. And when we could do basic, remember, you ask yourself two questions. Is there preferred stock and do I need to subtract the dividend? Yes, there is. Okay, because it's cumulative, which means we subtract it regard. You know, so this problem doesn't say whether it was declared or not, but it doesn't matter. So we're going to subtract it from. Uh, and then second question, we're going to subtract it from basic. The second question is, do we need to calc? Were there actual share transactions so that we need to calculate common stock outstanding, the weighted average? The answer there is no. So let's deal with the preferred stock dividend. So we got preferred stock dividend. Remember, it is the total par value outstanding which means we have to take the 10,000 shares times the $100 par per share, all right? So that's total par value outstanding. And then we just multiply that times the percent, which is five. So my preferred stock dividend is 50,000. All right, so let's do basic earnings per share. So basic is net income, 300,000 minus the preferred stock dividend, over shares, which was a hundred thousand. Okay, so we can see that's going to be two dollars and fifty cents per share. All right, so that's basic. All right, so now let's do dilutive. All right, so dilutive, we're going to handle each one of these dilutive securities one by one. Okay, so I'm just going to do them in the option that they are shown up here on the page options and then preferred and convertible bonds. All right, so remember when we're dealing with the options, we are going to do the treasury stock method. All right. So we start with proceeds and you'll notice in my last few videos, everything I do looks exactly the same every time. So I try to be a creature of habit because that way it helps me come test time uh, to make sure I do it correctly. So we have 30,000 options. All right. So remember now that we're down here in dilutive, this is all hypothetical. All right. So we're saying hypothetically, they exercise all 30,000 options, which means they're bringing us $10 per option or $300,000. All right. They gave us $300,000. They are sitting there waiting now on 30,000 shares. Okay, so we take the 300,000 and go out in the open market and see how many shares we can buy. So we're taking the 300,000 and seeing how many shares we can buy at the current or at the average market value for the year, which is 18. That gives us 16, 6, 6, 7. That's actually a fractional share, but I'm not worried about that in my class. You can just round that and make it easier. All right, so incremental shares. 13, 3, 3, 3. Now, if you want to be consistent with how we did it earlier, put times 12, 12. Now, remember, I don't write out the per share effect, all right, because the per share effect is zero, right? It's uh, just, I mean, well, here, I'll just write it up here. So the per share is just always going to be zero over the shares, all right? So that's always equal to zero. All right, so that takes care of that. Now, look, we don't start calculating diluted earnings per share yet. We wait to the end to do that. All right, so let's look at the convertible preferred shares now. All right, so convertible. So remember on our convertibles, we're looking at our numerator effect and our denominator effect. 
All right, remember, this is preferred stock that is cumulative, which means we backed out the dividend in basic. All right, now we're saying it's convertible. Remember, we're saying since it's convertible, we're assuming it would have been converted on day one of the year, which means there never would have been a dividend because there wouldn't have been any preferred stock, which means we need to add back that 50000 Okay, so make sure you're clear on why we're doing that. All right, the denominator says each share is converted into four. So we have 10,000 preferred shares times four. So that's going to be 40,000 shares. And technically, if you want to multiply that times 12, 12, you can. All right, so the per share, I'm just going to write this over here just so I have enough room for everything, uh, is going to be the 50,000 over the 40,000. All right, so that equals $1.25. Now remember our rule here, we compare that to basic all right so that's less than basic so it is dilutive so it means we will include it in all right and then our last one is convertible bonds all right we're still doing our numerator and denominator effects so remember the bonds our numerator effect is adding back the uh sorry adding back the interest net of tax all right so we said it says up here we have 500 one thousand dollar bonds Okay, so that gives me my total face value of the bonds. Multiply that times the 10%. That gives me the interest. Remember, we're saying these are issued at part at face value, which means there's no discount or premium. So this calculation is actually for the cash payment, but it would also be interest expense if there's no discount or premium. One minus 0.4, one minus the tax rate. And so that gives me $30,000. And that's a whole year's worth because they're outstanding. So we don't have to accrue the interest for a certain number of months. Uh, we're just good to go with that number times 12 twelfths, which is 30,000. All right. It says each bond, we have 500 bonds, is converted into 40 shares. Okay. So that means we're going to have 20,000 shares. And we could also multiply that times 12 twelfths if we want. All right. So let's do the per share down here just because I don't have room off to the side. All right. So that's going to be the 30,000 over the 20,000 shares. All right, so that's a dollar fifty. Dollar fifty, and uh, that is also less than basic. All right, so it's dilutive. Remember, if it's not, we did an example of that when we did the convertible first stock. If this relationship right here is flipped, they are not dilutive. And if you need, if you're not clear on that, go back and watch that the video on the convertible preferred stock where uh, we saw that happen. All right. Now that we have them all done, now we're going to start putting them into convertible. I'm sorry. Now we're going to start putting them into diluted, dilutive earnings per share. All right. The way we do that, we put them in by order of their per share effect. So options and warrants are always zero. So they're going to be first. This one's second. It's $1.25. And that one's going to be third because it's $1.50. Okay. So we'll put them in that order. And I'll kind of talk about why we do it that way in a minute. All right, so now we're going to do our dilutive earnings per share. So we start with the options. All right, remember, we start with basic earnings per share. So basic earnings per share was 250 over 100. And then we add in our numerator and denominator effect for each. And that gives me, uh, let's just get our subtotal here so that we know where to start the next row with. All right, so that equals $2.21. All right, the uh, convertible preferred stock is next. We start with the 250 over the 113333. And we're going to add in the 50,000 on top here and the 40,000 on the denominator here. So that brings me to 300,000. And that's dollars. And that's over 153, 333. All right. So that brings it down to a dollar ninety-six. So we keep going. All right. As long as it keeps going down, we keep going. All right. So now we have the convertible bonds. And we're going to add them in now. So we start with where we left off, 300,000 over 153, 333. We add in the, what was that, 30,000 and the 20,000 from the bonds. I'm not going to write the subtotal here because I'm done. And you can see that goes down a little bit more to $1.90. Okay. So my answer 
would be $1.90 for diluted earnings per share. All right, so some of you might be thinking, well, why don't I just add them all in at one time? Okay, well, that's fine uh, in this example, but it's not always fine in every example. So if you notice here, I mean, we started at basic was 250 and then we went down a, you know, a pretty big jump to this 229 was at 29 cents and then almost as big, but a little bit smaller jump down to $1.96 and then an even smaller jump down to $1.90. So you can see it's getting smaller and smaller. It gets to a point where they no longer have a diluted effect. If you're using the Kiso book, uh, just turn to your appendix in the book that in that chapter, and uh, the appendix does a great has a great example where they actually have four dilutive securities, and when they get to the fourth one, it actually makes it go back up a little bit. So that fourth one is considered non-dilutive. Okay, so if in, in that problem in the book in Kiso book in the appendix, if you were to add them all in at the, at the same time, you would end up getting the wrong answer. So just do it step by step. It takes you just a couple seconds longer to do it this way. But that way you're making sure that you don't make that mistake by adding them all in when one of them ends up, the last one ends up being not diluted. OK. All right. So that's earnings per share. We've covered dilutive securities in this chapter, how they we account for them. And then we cover basic and dilutive earnings per share. So a lot going on in this chapter. But you can see how this problem I just did is a great candidate to be a, you know, a, a, on your test or something similar to that from your teacher. So really pay attention to what your professor's uh, you know, doing in class and the extra problems they're showing you. And that typically gives you a pretty good indication of what you should expect to see on the test. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this chapter. Hopefully it helped. Uh, hopefully it helps a little bit with, uh, you know, all the different diluted securities and dealing with earnings per share and stuff like that. So hopefully it helps come test time. You know, please uh, subscribe to the channel. It does help me. And, you know, share it with your friends that might be going, uh, taking the same stuff in class right now. All right. We'll see you when we start the next chapter.